Some persons argue that votes do not count. But if votes do not count, why do politicians want to buy votes? That alone suggests that votes do count and they are valuable in the electoral process. However, vote trading is an albatross in our electoral process today, becoming quite a hard nut to crack for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and other key players in the electoral process, including the security agencies that should be on guard at all times. Why is vote buying and selling taking the shine of the laudable reforms in our electoral process in recent times? We will look at all perspectives to the issue on this episode of the program. And on that note, I welcome you to 30 Minutes on NTA News 24. Many thanks for joining us. I am Itaire Ikmen. Political watchers and analysts believe that the menace of vote buying and selling implies that sovereignty is hijacked from the people by money bags. And that defeats the essence of democracy, which is a system that ascribes power to the people. But how did vote trading creep into our electoral process? Lydia Samson gives us some insight in our first report. Vote buying is viewed purely as an economic exchange in which the voter sells his or her votes to the highest bidder or sometimes for just a pittance. Vote buying takes different forms in different locations around the world. There are quite a number of names that is given to it. There is see and buy, there is stomach infrastructure, there is Diboko Sebe. Uh, so those, those are the three that are more prominent. Uh, see and buy, uh, stomach infrastructure, uh, second page, Diboko Sebe, you know. So this, 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 this is, um, is taking a... It's been there all along, even in the First Republic. People were induced, but not on this magnitude, not at this scale. And unless we deal decisively with it, it's going to uh, affect the deepening of Nigerian democracy. It's going to af affect the delivery of good governance. It's going to truncate. It, it has the capacity to truncate our democracy. Because when people continually do not see the dividends, they will be disenchanted. Because Since Nigeria's independence in 1960 and the introduction of the electoral franchise with the one man, one vote mantra, some politicians who believe that the end justifies the means have perfected the art of using deplorable means to attain political power. In their desperation to defeat their opponents at the pool, majority of politicians have resorted to all manner of inducements to get voters to cast their votes, obviously not according to their conscience, but according to the weight of the largest doled out by each of the contesting parties. And whoever buys should be penalized. Because, number one, good governance that everybody is seeking and hoping for depends on the counting of our vote. You now sold your own for 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, as the case may be. At the end of the day, we will not end up completing ballot paper based on the sold PVC. And at the end of the day, people who have not been able to help the society will now still go back, find their way into the system again, and continue the manipulations of governance and dividends that are supposed to come along with it to get up to ordinary people on the street. What would you say to those who claim ignorance? Sir? Uh, well, it is not ignorant. It is a deliberate action. Apparently, vote buying did not surface out of the blues, as there have been shades of menace manifesting at various political eras. However, during the off cycle governorship election of Ekiti State in July 2018, vote buying was like a bazaar with a nomenclature of see and buy, which means the voter sneakingly displays the ballot to indicate his or her choice for a fee or instant monetary gratification. What, what, what pride has a poverty stricken person? What pride has somebody who doesn't even know where his next meal will come from? A thousand naira can, can make him a uh, part with his pride. So, INEC need to really sit up. Uh, National Orientation Agency, that, ex that, 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 that agency that has been existing uh, more, more in name than, than, than in action, should, should sit up. They should, they, should, they should, so that when tomorrow our leaders don't do what they promise to do, we will be, we'll, we'll be morally 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 justify to hold them to to it but what 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 what, what is your moral uh, basis if if uh, from the beginning you sold your right you sold your right to to choose rightly 
to choose wisely? What would be your, what would be your moral justification to, to hold them to account when they don't do what they, they promise to do? So it, it's wrong. It's wrong in all ramifications. The buyer is wrong. The, the, the seller is wrong. The authorities need to sit up. That's my take. Politicians since then have been devising various means of perfecting the notorious electoral malpractice of see and buy. When you humanize the figure and tell the, tell the electorate what it means, how these politicians will recoup whatever they have spent on their campaigns, on their elections, and how it will further underdevelop the state or the country. Because when these people recoup their investment in politics, they are going to recoup with huge profit. So you won't be able to ask them for the roads, the hospitals, the, the schools, the, 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 the infrastructure that they promise in their campaigns because they will tell you they have paid for it. So that is the implication that Nigerians need to be aware of the uh, wider implication of engaging in vote trading. Very unfortunately, even the youths who are supposed to enlighten their parents not to be engaged are now themselves making such demands because their excuse being that, oh, it's our money, we will collect it and nothing will happen. After all, if we don't collect, in the next four years, we may not see these people. But that is a very jejun argument. It's a layman argument. We should look at the wider implication, how it affects the delivery of campaign promises, the delivery of good governance, and the deepening of democracy. The blatant manner in which votes are hawked, sold, and bought freely in off-season elections in the country in recent years is alarming. But why would voters descend so low to contemplate selling their votes? As a people, I think we're generally quite selfish and we tend to look at what benefits us, uh, what benefits us uh, in the immediate term. And we don't uh, have any foresight and we're not able to look maybe a few years down the line and actually see the impact that it has, not just on ourselves, but on our kids and our grandkids. Um, I think once we're able to look at it from that perspective, I think uh, we might be able to get the change that we want. Analysts note that the bazaar-like atmosphere in which the inglorious transaction was carried out and its potential for casting huge shadows on the integrity of general elections cannot be ignored, but vehemently tackled and resisted. They are just selling their future, they are mortgaging their future. It's so simple. Actually, I believe the, the electorate, they, used, they have to use this media to campaign and sanitize a young Nigerians. Because a lot of people have been misleading to sell their boat to have a little change, not knowing that the boat is their power and they have every right to vote for a right candidate. It is so bad that the INEC chairman was one time quoted as saying, our democracy is on sale on open market. We have observed this in the series of elections we have conducted so far and this must stop, end of quote. It is reported that politicians usually mobilize a humongous amount of cash ahead of elections, primarily for inducing voters. Unfortunately, analysts note that vote buying cannot stop on its own unless the appropriate laws are enforced. Ever stopping? I, I don't see them ever stopping. And um, to be honest, I don't blame them. Um, because uh, people are opportunists and anywhere you see an opportunity, you will try and exploit it. And um, unless we, we as a people actually start asking questions of them and demanding more of them, um, it wouldn't ever change. Um, once they see the opportunity to exploit it, and, and my own personal take is that they actually uh, perpetrate the problem because they don't bring the development that we want, um, knowing that when it comes to the time where they will need to use their money or their influence to buy votes, that uh, it makes it easier for them. Whereas if they had actually developed us in our education, um, people are wiser and know the impacts of the vote buying, they won't be so quick to sell their votes. 
that vote buying has escalated into an open practice in defiance of authority of law enforcement agents or allegedly with their connivance suggests that it is a serious problem that requires the strategists to checkmate it. Political watchers believe that inadequate political education of the citizenry to demand good governance rather than temporary monetary gains could also be responsible. For pay to survive, uh, what more of uh, PVC, for instance? Uh, INEC needs to sit up. It shouldn't just leave it to political parties. Political parties exist to win elections. And they do anything. They, 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 they are open to do anything to make sure that winning comes to their side. But INEC, which is the arbiter, which is the empire, umpire, need to sit up to do a lot of education on this. A lot of uh, enlightenment, letting people know why selling PVC may not still be the way out. But not so deaf as those who will not hear. I think the challenge has been that of implementation. Um, right now, our law enforcement agencies are going about it the wrong way. If you really want to wipe out vote trading, it has to be done as a covert operation. It has to be done as a sting operation. It has to be done in a way that you catch people in the heart. Two, you also will need something like a mobile court so that it's not a protracted thing. We are told in Nikiti that 15 people were arrested by EFCC. We do not know the status of the investigation and what will come of it. But if there is a mobile court that immediately tries with the evidences, the law is very clear, 500,000 fine or one year imprisonment or both. Key players insist that he knows electoral crime such as vote buying must not be allowed to continue unabated and more efforts should be deployed on political education in various Nigerian languages to create better understanding of civic responsibility, democracy and good governance. No doubt about that, Lydia. Vote trading has to be truncated and expunged from our electoral process by deploying the full weight of the law against perpetrators. And talking about the law, the Electoral Act 2022 spells out tough sanctions for electoral offenses, including vote buying and selling. What does the law say and what are the strategies to uphold and enforce the law? Let's hear from Abdusalam Jubril in this next report. Vote buying or selling is a criminal offense which affects the sanctity and credibility of the electoral process. Sections 121 and 127 of the Electoral Act 2022 have provisions which identify vote buying or selling as an electoral offense punishable by law. Political analysts insist that strict enforcement and implementation of the Electoral Act 2022 will reduce money politics and vote buying. I think I'm mean, able to uh, exactly quote that particular section, but uh, in all honesty, we envisaged you know, these issues of vote buying and we, uh, in the process of making the, the law, we thought that it would be necessary for there to be punishment, you know, for people to buy votes and to also sell their votes. Uh, flowing from elections uh, conducted by INEC lately, using the beavers, which to an extent has uh, reduced uh, the level of uh, toggery, uh, reduced uh, the level of uh, ballot snatching and all kinds of uh, uh, electoral violence. The other next thing to do, uh, most politicians who are not uh, close to the people, to a great extent, always want to go by way of uh, buying votes. They, however, point out that its enforcement is a different ball game. They maintain that the active deployment of billions of Naira, if left unchecked, would contribute to the gradual erosion of whatever little gains that the improved 
2022 Electoral Act may have conferred on the electoral system. But what is the provision of the electoral system? Arrest, prosecution. That's what is the electoral act. I'm only saying, how does that now affect the gold already casting? Because you cannot determine from that box which one belongs to the person that took money to carry the vote or which one is not. So the entire content of that box will remain valid, except otherwise proven. And the attempt of the electoral act is to make that the electoral process same. And I'm saying that has not helped us in bringing sanity to that electoral process. For some politicians who are arrogant, they will say, look, I bought my vote. I spent my money. Let me regain back my money. So vote buying, at the end of the day, leads to corruption. Meanwhile, the person whose vote was bought does not like corruption. He condemns corruption. It leads to inefficiency in governance and inefficiency in performance. And at the end of the day, it discredits the democratic rule. It makes it look bad. It makes it, people feel that what is he used? You know, if a man does not perform well and he can continue to come back. So at the end of the day, it's not good for anybody. Many have termed it cash and carry democracy, a situation where active deployment of huge sums of money for all shades of voter inducement, including vote buying, is brazenly practiced. During the recent governorship election in Ekiti State, there were allegations that the poll was marred by vote buying as agents of political parties were allegedly cited negotiating with voters. The recent primaries of political parties were not spared. Similar allegations of vote buying and inducement of delegates with perhaps few political parties exonerated from the electoral offense. Some analysts maintain that vote buying corrupts the electoral process and could drop the wrong candidates. They insist that with wrong candidates emerging as winners, the country suffers and the electorate should not expect democracy dividends from such leaders who have to recover their investment first before fulfilling their campaign promises. It, it, is corrupt, it does corrupt uh, the legitimate process in which um, candidates should emerge and at the end of the day in which you know, electorate will have their representative. So, uh, so um, the vote buying, the effect of vote buying is that those who have corruptly enriched themselves those who don't know what to do when they get to governance, those who go to borrow money from banks and then mortgage their property, those who go to meet godfathers to sponsor them, can now raise you some of money and then buy their way into government. And in their sense, one of the first things they do is to try to recoup their investment. They see governance as an investment process, as a profit-making venture. While our governance should be a selfless process. And that's why some of us are saying, if you disincentify governance, by making sure those who come should have their private business, should work for where they work from, and then go to work and then work for the Nigerian people at no cost. No doubt, voter inducement in the form of vote buying and selling has become a disturbing feature in Nigeria's Nasset democratic experiment with its attendant negative consequences. It has also heightened the monetization of the electoral process where the highest bidder gets the trophy. The electoral umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in previous elections had adopted several approaches against vote buying that includes sensitization, voter education and security measures, among others. However, some experts maintain that these measures are not enough. They can't work, I can say so, because you cannot come and treat symptoms and leave the course. That is why if you go to hospital, you will first be diagnosed. They will test you. What is the program? So if you go treating symptoms, the sickness will persist. So vote buying is start from orientation, people's way of life. Uh, because if as a person I know what I want and I'm going for it, you can't divert my attention. You can't distract me. Experts identify poverty as well as lack of awareness as some of the factors that make some Nigerians vulnerable. They urge 
the Political Education Department of INEC and other relevant agencies charged with public enlightenment to rise up to the occasion as part of the preparations for the upcoming off-season polls and the 2023 general elections. Okay, if we, if we enforce here, some people at the back will still do it. And then it's like now, it's like vote, vote buying becomes a business. You get money at that particular time and solve a particular problem. You don't care about what happens the next uh, four years or thereabout. So the truth is that the thing is risky and it, it doesn't, it's not good for the society. We get, look at Nigeria as our own child. We need to build a country. So when we build a country, then we can enjoy that country. But if we're looking at Nigeria as a plate of food, that anybody goes there, pick it and go. That is how these things will continue. We first and foremost, we want to, we, we, there, there should be projection of nation building. Let's all work together, get Nigeria to the right place, and then we can enjoy it together. But if you look at it as food, that is how this thing will continue. So first, let's love Nigeria. Let's make Nigeria greater than Nigerians. As it stands now, Nigerians are greater than Nigeria. So everybody wants to be great on his own level. So they don't care about Nigeria. If, in fact, if Nigeria ceases to be, some people are comfortable like that. But if it is like that, that's how we we'll continue doing this, the selling, uh, buying vote, so that we can enjoy ourselves. We don't care about the society. We don't care about the community. We don't care about the country. So let's love Nigeria. Let's build a country that we can enjoy the, 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 the country. There is advocacy that the establishment of an electoral commission that will be saddled with the responsibility of apprehending and prosecuting Nigerians caught in the act of vote buying or vote selling will go a long way in curbing the menace in Nigeria's electoral process. To create you know, election, election um, offenses and related uh, election, election offenses and related commission, related issues commission, issues that deal with election offense, criminal offense, ballot box smashing, you know, uh, what they call it, toggery, and uh, vote buying. All these things could be brought into this commission, and this commission will not be responsible to carry out this function. And people will be aware that this commission will be an underground commission, will be an intelligence agency that look at things, and they could be part of the electorate, and they will be able to arrest more people. Going forward, Nigeria's election remains one of the most expensive in the world, given the commercialization of the electoral process by desperate politicians who corrupt the process with inducement of party delegates during party primaries and vote buying during general or off-season elections. Indeed, the election management bodies, anti-corruption agencies, the security agencies, as well as the electorate have the honor stacks of finding lasting solutions to this menace for the credibility of future elections. Indeed, Abdul Salam, collaborative efforts and strategies, as well as strict enforcement of the law, are required to tackle the menace of vote buying and selling. That's where we leave it on the program today until we come your way again with another interesting episode. Do well to keep safe at all times. I am Itaire Ikwen. See you next time. <music>